Good day to all who is watching. Before starting work, I make comfortable lighting. Firmly fix the stretched canvas on a wall mounted easel. I start the picture from the sketch on the previously primed and tinted canvas. This time will be quite complicated with lots of animal figures and an interesting landscape. The central figure rises above the masses of bodies. Chaos and crash around. Using the ruler I draw the straight lines of objects, architectural elements and the horizon. A flaming banner. Well, and work without enemies. I decide to pull up the second sections of the canvas. Too annoying. Yes, I really don't want to, but the future me certainly will thank me. Remove from the easel and pick up the staples with what you can find in hand. In this case, a knife. Stretch as much as possible and fix it again. Don't be afraid to tear this cloth, you cannot do it with your bare hands. Gently fold and attach excess. Much better. As a palette, you can use the remains of tiles with a neutral color and a smooth surface. It is very easy to clean and I do not mind throwing it away. Steer a standard set of colors and start painting from the background. I really like the sky in this picture. I wanted to paint a stormy sky which will create a depressing atmosphere of the slaughterhouse. But it turned out to be quite bright, illuminated by the hail of lightning, which will appear in the picture later. The horizon line and the landscape drowning in the dark. Canyon rivers and mountains which become visible thanks to the light reflected from the sky and striking lightning in the ground. Mountain peaks in the distance, perhaps too colorful. The remnant of ancient civilization, portal in another world. Or maybe just the border of the territory for which only those who have a lucky ticket are allowed. Predators circling the crowd. Like demons they scream and in rapid falls tear off pieces of flesh from strugglers and defenseless animals. They are forced to rush forward without looking back on the steep rocky slopes. Forward on the heads and bodies of stumbled comrades. Without looking at the road in the hope of salvation they stretch towards the light. The symbol of power the blazing ritual staff breaks the darkness with a bright fire. 
paving a way for the most courageous and ruthless. For a brief moment of heaven fire, you have to pay with your head. But this will not stop those who wish. They will again and again pick it up and carry it, pushing each other apart, grinding the ribs and their heavy hoofs. demons, for what sin they torment these animals. But are they demons? You look at their majestic wingspan, at the flicker of almost transparent feathers under the flash of lightning, on faceless beaks, without a shadow of doubt, plunging into bloody carcasses. You start to think that maybe they are playing the role of medics trying to destroy a nasty virus that has hit the world and is transmitted from one animal to another through close physical contact. And these creatures break through the cordons. They try to escape from quarantine through narrow slits of rocks, scratching their sides against sharp stones. Huge herd moves forward in a single stream, indistinguishable from one another, fat, blind, stinking, push the neighbors south with horns. In turmoil, one of them breaks from the rocks and falls onto the dry grass, breaking his legs and for a long time still tormented in helpless agony. The leader must be different from others. The leader should limit others. If everyone is naked, then the leader is the one who spreads chastity. He must wear clothes to make others ashamed. Even if the clothes are just a rug pulling the excess mass into the tight bunches. What thought faded in his head a second before his death? Has he managed to fully satisfy himself with the fulfillment of his dream? Was he sorry for something? All the answers are now locked in a school box separated from the body, flying above the ground, tightly clenched in a sunless claws. And beneath him are faithful followers, still pushing him up, above, so that everyone can see the universal idol. When they realize that he's gone, another will come to his place, dress in his clothes, take his ideas, pervert them, and light again, punching the way through the darkness, <laughs> but in the other direction. The idea of this picture came to me after reading the biography of Francisco Goya, the Spanish master of fine art of the Romantic era. At the end of his life, Goya met with diseases and deafness, he threatened his work to reflect the eternal madness of mankind and reveal the ugliness of the moral, political and spiritual foundations of the Spanish order of that time. Personally, I did not manage to absorb public executions, but after spending enough time in the past operative wards and mental hospitals, I decided that I can try to express my personal thoughts on this topic in the form of art. Cope as I can with complex lighting. I create the bodies of animals, attaching muscles and tendons to the bone frame, cutting the muscles into strips and patterns, increasing, deepening, I give you a grotesque and dramatic feeling with contrasting shadows. Crushed by their own genus, left behind, choking in the blood, but still showing signs of life. Soon, overcoming the agony, they will become one with Earth, distributing the weight of accumulated experience on its surface. He bent under the weight of his fellow. The spine is cracking with tension. Hot steam comes from the mouth, darkness inside. 
the sounds coming from all sides merge into the single hellish moan. The ultimate roar is supported by thunder strikes that tear the eardrums. In a panic, stumbled into a pile, trying to hide behind the backs of others, in horror before the threat that had rushed upon them. The demon's claws aim at the eyes and throat with a clear intention of killing. They cannot escape from the power of nature, which had decided to erase from the face of the earth its own mistakes. And the eternal stones do not care about all this hustle. The blood spilled on the surface will be washed away by a warm rain, and the hard working insects will clear the remains of the flesh. Cold and silent mountains bury their roots in the armor of the planet, wanting to get to the treasured molten core and finally dissolve in it. <laughs>